Good evening, brothers and sisters. I hope that this video find you doing well. Just thank God for things are as well as they are. And with all the things that are going on in this world, God is so good to all of us. Amen. With the stuff happening across seas and even stuff that's happening here. Because Lord knows I went by the gas pump and it's over $4 a gallon. And But God is watching over us and and seeing we, we can complain and fuss, but at least we got it now. Amen. That's the thankful part. You know, it's going up, but God is making a way for us to get what we need. And we just thank God for that. Amen. I mean, God is just showing himself strong in our lives, but you got to continue to trust him. We all have to continue to trust him and communicate with him. We got to keep on praying. Amen. And speaking of prayer, I ask, you know, you continue to pray for the sick and shut in and all of those who are in bereavement and pray for our caretakers and essential workers, our military, our police officers. Just pray for doctors, nurses, all of these folks. Just keep on praying. Teachers, um, parents themselves, pray for and pray for our, the minds of our children. There's so many things, so many distractions out there for adults and children alike. But just pray. We just keep we just have to have that prayer line. Our prayer life has to be strong and remain strong. Amen. We have a video message where well, we have a message, um, an audio message from a, a revival that I did a couple of years ago um, at a church called Piney Grove in A-Line, Georgia. Amen. And the title of the message is um, God Wants More. So it's going to be two parts. It was kind of lengthy. So we're going to have two parts. We're going to have the day and we'll conclude on Sunday. But I hope that it will be a blessing to you if you listen to what the message is saying. We're going to dissect one verse coming from um, Paul's letter to the church at Rome, Romans 12. We're going to dissect one verse talking about um, what what Paul is asking. He's begging, you know, brethren, I, I, I beseech you, brethren, therefore, by the mercies of God. And we'll finish the rest of it. But we want to break that verse down and go into um, the message telling us that God wants more. And it's our duty to give God everything that we have. But before we get into our message, I'm going to ask, us, ask you to join us in a word of prayer. Dear Father, we come in the name of Jesus, thanking you that things are as well as they are. Thanking you for being such a loving, kind, and gracious Father. Father, we ask that you continue to bless as you have. Father, look out for the, the sick and the, the, the poor in and, and spirit and the shut-in and those who are going through depression and all sorts of things and, and those who are in bereavement, who've lost loved ones, strengthen them in the name of Jesus. Those who are losing faith, Father, encourage them through the power of the Holy Spirit. And Father, we ask that you bless these ministries that are planted in your name, that are, that are seeking souls that are lost and not trying to make a name for themselves. Father, continue to help us, continue to, to motivate us to do your will and not our own will. And Father, we ask that, that you bless the hearers and doers of your word today. Continue to bless this ministry, Father, as we, as we go forth in your name. These are the blessings we ask in our son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now for part one of God Wants More. And I hope you enjoy book of Romans and the 12th chapter. Amen. I want to ask that you stand to show reverence to the reading of God's word. Yes, sir. <clears throat> the 12th chapter of the book of Romans. Paul's epistle to the church at Rome. We would like to notice one verse, and we'd, we'd like to give our complete message tonight from that one verse. Verse number one. And it reads and says, I beseech ye, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, 
acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You may be seated. We'd like to speak to you from a thought tonight. God wants more. God wants more. As I reflect back over my life, I'm inclined to believe that God, the God that we serve, mm -hmm. is a faithful God. I'm of the persuasion and conviction that he is the sustainer and the maintainer of my life. He's carried me through dangers seen and unseen. In fact, he, he kept me even when I couldn't keep myself. I wish I had a witness in the house. Tonight. He is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, strong power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. He is a God who has never gone back on his word. And as I look back, I can truly say that the God that we serve is faithful. And because he's so faithful, because he's so awesome, he requires us, his servants, to be faithful also. The word says, to whom much is given, much will be required. And I want to share with you what I believe is perhaps the greatest problem facing the church today. This is a problem that I believe has plagued, infected, infested, and infiltrated the body of Christ, the church as a whole. And let me suggest to you that the greatest problem facing us is not the gang problem on the outside. It's not the drug pusher on the outside. Amen. It's not the moral values of our youth, not ungodliness, not unrighteousness, not darkness on the outside, not sin on the outside. But the greatest problem facing us today is not what's going on on the outside. Amen. But what ain't going on on the inside. Amen. We, we may be doing everything in the church, but God wants more. I believe that's what Paul is trying to tell us. You're moving in the anointing. Your services are flowing. Your membership is growing. New programs are being implemented. But he says here in chapter 12 of Romans, God wants more. The text says, I beseech you. That word beseech is a term that means to call alongside, to come alongside, to encourage. Paul says, I'm calling you to accountability right now. It's a word that was used in military circles that tells what happens when a military leader calls the soldiers into action. When the troops are on their way to war, the commander would call them together because they were preparing to do battle. That's the same term used here. Paul says, I'm calling you to attention. I'm calling you to come together. I beseech you. I encourage you. I exhort you. I plead with you. I'm encouraging you. I confront you. I challenge you. He says, I beseech you, therefore. And I, I'm going to get there after a while. Amen. Now, now, we've just come to what I want to call a spiritual stop sign. And we've got to stop where Paul says, I beseech you, therefore. 
Amen. The word therefore is a connecting word and is the key to the entire verse. We must recognize that the word therefore means I said and based on what I said, I'm getting ready to say something else. Amen. He says, I beseech you, therefore. Amen. And we can't go any further until we find out what the therefore is there for. Because the therefore is there for a reason. And unless we know what the therefore is there for, we won't understand what he's trying to tell us following the word therefore. And because what he says following the therefore is based on what he said before he said the therefore. So let us now discover what the therefore is there for. Amen. Are y'all following me? Amen. Paul says, I beseech you, therefore. I've discovered that there are three crucial therefores in the book of Romans. Remember, therefore means I said, and based on what I said, I'm getting ready to say something else. Do y'all remember when I said that? So if we are uh, were to outline the book of Romans, we find that the first crucial therefore is found in Romans 5 and 1. Amen. It says, the verse reads, it says, therefore be being justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's the first crucial therefore. All that he said from chapters 1 through chapter 4 hinges on what he said or what is being said in chapters 5 verse 1. Where he says in Romans verse 5 he says therefore being justified by faith. And that word justified is a legal term which means to be declared righteous. It means that we've been declared innocent. It means that we've been declared righteous. It means that we've been declared blameless. It is a term that is used in a court of law. Now I want to I want to I want to make it plain to you. I want to paint a picture to you now. You 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 now you're now in court. Hey, amen. Are y'all are y'all with me? Hey, amen. And, and the crime that you're being tried for, you did commit. Oh, oh yeah, you did it. I, you know, don't don't try to sit in here and look all innocent in your suit. No, yeah, yeah, you did it. Hey, amen. And now you find yourself in a court of law, and you see that that we all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> have committed the crime of sin. And we all have been found guilty. For the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, if you're still thinking you're too holy, 1 John 1 and 8 picks it up and said, if you say that we have no sin, notice the verb have there is present tense and not past tense. If we say that we have no sin, you deceive yourself and the truth is not in you. Can I get a witness in here? So all of us have messed up every once in a while. All of us have messed up along the way. And even now, every once in a while, if we're not careful. Oh, y'all ain't going to talk to me tonight. Hey, amen. But the good thing is, is that God is the judge. Amen. God is the judge sitting on the bench up there. He's waiting to hear the trial. And, and we've been given an attorney. John calls him our advocate. Someone to plead our case. And if you check his credentials, you'll discover that he's none other than Jesus Christ himself. Can I get a witness in here? And it's so good to know that our attorney or our advocate, who is Jesus Christ, is the son of the judge. And our, our attorney is there to plead our case. In fact, he not only pleads our case, but he willingly takes our place and pays the penalty and covers us with his blood. Amen, somebody. So every time the judge looks at us, he sees our attorney, Jesus Christ. 
who stands in front of us raising his hands. Amen. No matter what the devil tries to put on us, no matter what the prosecution, and that's the devil, no matter what he tries to say and what he tries to do to us and what he tries to accuse us of, for the Bible says that he stands in front of the God in front of God day and night, accusing the brother. Can I get a witness in here? But we are overcomers. For we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. I wish I had a Bible reader in here. Amen. He covers us with his blood. So every time the judge looks at us, he sees his son, Jesus Christ. And when Jesus is standing there in front of us, the Lord looks and sees the holes in his hand. And while he has his hands raised, he looks at his side and he sees the pierce of the spear in his side. Can I get a witness in here? And where the blood came streaming down, it represents what he did on Calvary for us. And what he did was die for my sins and yours. And even though all have sinned and come short, that's all right, that's all right. We know that the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life. But when the judge looks at our attorney, standing before us, who saved us, who saved us through his hanging on the cross, the judge then bangs his gavel and say that I now declare you innocent. I now declare you righteous. I now declare you blameless. Not because of who you are, but because of who your attorney is. Not because of what you've done, but because of what he's done. Oh, I wish I had somebody praying with. Therefore, we are justified by faith. Can I get a witness in here? We, we now, we now, we now come to the second crucial therefore found in Romans 8 and 1. He says, therefore is, therefore now, he said, there is, therefore now, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. In other words, although we are uncommitted, we are uncondemned. Because the penalty of our sin was paid by Jesus Christ. And due to the fact that Jesus paid the penalty, God will not lay the penalty and the punishment of sin on us. Church should have lit up right there. Amen. Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. But before you start to shout, before you start shout, look at this. The penalty of sin has already been paid. Therefore, you are no longer condemned. And since you're no longer condemned, you are now, you now have a responsibility to the one who declared you righteous. Amen. You now have a responsibility to the one who declared you uncondemned. That leads us back to our verse in our text that says in verse in chapter 12, verse 1, I beseech you, therefore. Now, based on all that I've said, based on the fact that you do deserve damnation based on the fact that my son did stand in your place based on the fact that you did stand before me guilty based on the fact that my son took the penalty for you based on the fact that God has not given you what you justly deserve based on the fact you are no longer condemned based on all of that now I beseech you brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. God, God says, God says, based on all that I've done, you now have a responsibility. So Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren. Now understand that when Paul uses the term brethren, he does not use it in an ethnic colloquial sense. Are y'all with me? But in a spiritual sense. Paul here is talking about people who have already been saved. He's speaking about church folks. 
Folks who have been saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Folks who come to church and sing in the choir and serve on the usher board and pay their tithes. He's talking about folks who are already saved. But he challenges them to do something they have not already done. You see, God is never interested in when you got saved as he is with what you've done since you've been saved. Oh, I wish I had some. Amen. He's talking to folk that are already saved. He confronts them to do something that they've not already done. He said, I beseech you, therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. In other words, you've already given me something. You've not given me all that I want, though. He's talking about discipleship. He's talking about total surrender. I beseech you, brethren. I beseech you, sisterin. I beseech you, saints of God, to do something that you have not already done. And he says, I, I, I'm basing all of this on the mercies of God. Now, now we got to understand the difference between grace and mercy. Grace is God's unmerited favor. In other words, when God gives you what you don't deserve. Mercy, on the other hand, is when God doesn't give you what you justly deserve. Amen. Amen, somebody. Mercy is based on justification. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. In other words, God is saying, based on the fact that I'm not going to give you what you deserve, because you deserve to lift your eyes in hell. You deserve weeping and gnashing of teeth. You deserve eternal damnation. You deserve eternal separation from me. You deserve eternal death. But because of what my son Jesus did, I'm going to give you what you don't deserve, what is grace, and I'm going to withhold what you do justly deserve, and that's my mercy. And based on the fact that I'm not going to give you what you deserve, I beseech you, therefore, by the mercies of God. Hey, we're, going to stop that right there. we're going to stop that right there, and we'll jump into... Um, the conclusion of this message or, or part two of this message on Sunday morning, if it's God's will, but we hope that you're getting something out of God wants more and it's motivating you to know that there's always something else that we can do and we're not giving God our all. And, and this message convicted me at one time. Um, that we're not doing as much as we should. And, and even, even when it's convicted and we're doing more, we still have more to give God if we do so. Amen. And we just thank you for joining us this, joining us this afternoon. And just thank you for your continued support of this channel and of this ministry. We just thank God for you. Share this word with somebody who um, may feel they got it all together. There's always more that we can do and we can give to God. Amen. We also thank you for your financial support that you've given. Miss, but you've been showing up and showing out. Amen. And we're going to see if we, we're still in that, that, that we still have that same energy uh, of giving as we did um, last month. And our, our trustee committee will be back for our tithes and offerings and contributions on Saturday, March 12th um, at 10 a.m. at the house. So come on, do a drive by and speak and fellowship a little bit and, you know, keep going because we still, we're not out of the woods yet, but we're better off than we were. Amen. So come on by. They'll be there um, Saturday morning, March 12th, which is this coming Saturday at um, 10 a.m. So come on by and do what we have to do. And we also thank God for our covenant partners and, and those who can't come by. You, you mail your contributions in and, and we just thank God for you, for your support of the ministry as well. And we do have our um, address there. It's Mississippi Baptist Church, Post Office Box 1275, Baxley, Georgia, 31515. That's Mississippi Baptist Church, Post Office Box 1275, Baxley, Georgia, 315. One five, and as always, I got to get out of here. But we ask for your prayers for the sick and shut in, and also those in mourning and bereavement. You know, pray for their strength.
pray for their strength because, you know, after the phone calls and the visitation stop, you know, they need encouragement. So pray for their strength. Amen. And you can also be that encouragement. Amen. And in the form of, a, of an announcement, that Sunday morning, I said that um, the annual prayer, March prayer band or prayer rally um, is going on right now as we speak, started Monday and will continue on until March the 21st. And as I said, um, each day it starts at 4 p.m. And I have the number right down there. MISPA, we are on to host on March the 17th. That'll be Thursday, March the 17th. And um, we're on the host and I'm slated to speak. So make sure that you have this number. You don't need a passcode. You call straight through. Join in each day with um, the different churches. Um, for example, on today, it'll be Thankful New Jersey. They're hosting at 4 p.m. So that number is there. Remember, um, press star six to mute or unmute your phone if you're participating. Amen. And Mr. Remember, we are on March the 17th. OK. All right. That'll, that'll be it in the form of announcements. Uh, I'm getting out of here. Stay safe. Remember, when you go out, still stay safe. Don't think that if we're totally out of the woods. We're better off, but we're not out of the woods yet. So stay safe. Wear your mask when you need to and have to. Watch those crowds. Keep your hands washed like you were doing before. Um, amen. Just do what you're supposed to do. And we're getting on out of here. I love you all. Continue to pray for me. Call me out by name as I pray for you. Um, because that's love. That's what love is all about. So I, I love you all. And until Sunday morning, we get part two. Take care of yourselves and each other. Good evening.